video has been long in the making. Uh, many of you from time to time have asked me what are my top 10 finds uh, because you see me at the end of each year, the beginning of each year, put a video out, top 10 finds for the year. So some of you have been asking what are my top 10 finds. And uh, so I sat down, went through all my hundreds of videos and, and thought through the process and came up with a top 10 list that these are what I think are my top 10 finds. Now, none of these finds, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and say that these are the greatest finds that anybody has ever found. Uh, they're not the most valuable finds uh, as anyone has ever found. These are just my top 10 finds. And so as I look through my videos and I thought, how do I judge the criteria? What's gonna make my list? And so I came up with four criterias. And uh, the first and foremost criteria is rarity. How rare is this find? And so that would push it way up on the list. Secondly would be the historical value. How historical is it? How, you know, uh, how old, how far back goes, how, how rich is the history of it? Uh, so that would be my number two. Uh, number three would be the uniqueness of the, of the, the value of it, the unique thing. You know, not everything is equal, uh, made equal. And, uh, and then the last one would be the monetary value. That, that means the least to me than any of, any of them at all. But those are my criteria that I put together to make this video for you. So I hope you enjoy my top 10 finds of all time. Well, I was getting a 37 to a 51 signal and I Looking for a gold ring, but I didn't get a gold ring, but I got a, looks like a 14 karat gold uh, chain. Pretty nice, check that out. Yeah, finally got me some gold. Uh, I'll take that, well that's shiny, that's heavy too, that's got some weight to it. A 14 karat gold chain, look at it. It says 14 karat right there. It's upside down, but you can see it. And it has these little cuts on it that looks like it's got diamonds on it, check that out. We're going to weigh it and see how much it weighs, too. All right, I got my scale. Let's turn it on. It is zeroed out. Let's put on the gold. And we're going to have 27.9 grams of gold. If I can get that to focus there. It's going to be 0.98 ounces. Almost one ounce of gold. What's gold running for? Nine, eight ounces, almost one ounce of gold in that chain. Woohoo! We moved on from that last location. We got us an 1850s home here. We uh, jumped out here. Seth came over here and gave me this target. Oh, it's pretty deep. Look at this. Nine inches deep. Popped it out. Bringing up a 31, 33 out of in the hole. 31 out of the hole. We don't know what it is yet. It's white looking too. So we're gonna find out. Oh. It's a seeded. Yep. It is a seeded quarter. My first seeded quarter. <laughs> I bet you're Beautiful. sick now, aren't I'm you? Sick. <laughs> Seth is sick. He gave me this quarter. 1876. Check that out. Oh wow. Perfect condition. Look at that. Oh, this is a this is a beautiful, my first seeded quarter ever. Gosh, look at that. Thank you, Seth. You're welcome. Oh, you're shooting yourself now. No, it's all right. <laughs> you just no more largies, huh? Oh, I tell you what, that's better than a largie. Check that out. First target, the 1876 seeded quarter. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. This may condition. be a good yard for us. Let's yeah. get some pictures and keep swinging. <laughs> Thank you, man. You're welcome. Well, still working this hill on the other side of the sidewalk, the uh, stairs going up. Got a 29 to a 31 high tone and just popped it up. And I believe it's going to be silver. Oh my goodness. Y'all see that? That is going to be a standing SLQ. That's going to be a standing Liberty quarter. That's only my second or third one I think I've ever dug. I think that's what that is. Yeah, that is going to be pretty nice. I've never seen one in such impeccable shape like this. That is unreal. I mean, that must have been dropped. 
Yeah, because I can still see the details on the shield. Still see her boob. Wow, there is nowhere on this whatsoever. This is a good coin. Let me clean it up really good, and then I'll come back and show you a close-up. Guys, this is not a 27. After cleaning it up, I'm glad I didn't rub this. Use my holy water on it. This is a 1917 Type 1 uh, S Mint Mark. This is the rare of all of them. This is not like the more common ones, the 27 and the other years. This is not, they only minted these 1916 and 1917. And this is a 1971, I mean, 1917 S Type 1 so far. And uh, just in the shape that it's in, I don't know if you can really see. Let me see if I can get closer. You can even see the, let me see if I can get it to focus a little bit more. Nope, it's not going to focus. But you can see the details in the shield that you can't see on camera, but I can see it here. And this is going to be impeccable shape. I'm going to have to get this one graded. Check that out. All right, let's get some pictures and let's keep on going. There may be another one in here. Pretty decent signal here. And uh, we're out here at night hunting out in this field. And uh, I got this tone. And I know you can't see it here. Uh, I'm going to do my best to show this to you. Um, I, it's a around. This is what I, what I saw. And when I flipped it over, is that what I think it is, folks? It is. It is. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I cannot believe this. Do y'all see that? Let me put some brighter light on. Terry, come over here. That is a breastplate, eagle breastplate, folks. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that on the light or not. But that's what that is. Wow. That is unbelievable there. Oh, it's it's all it's the lead part. It's all the lead. Let me see if I can clean it up a little bit better and get on a, another get my other camera y'all see the eagle there now this is just the lead part uh, it doesn't have any brass on it but that is the eagle this is my first target you can tell look we're just out in the pitch black in this field I walked maybe a hundred feet this was my first target Wow that is amazing there that is a fine that's what I came down here for right there Oh, there may be more out here. Let's keep going. All right, I'm excited now. Here's a little bit better picture of it. You can see that. Wow, this is great. This is awesome. Best find I've ever had out here. That's on the bucket list right there. I was getting a 14, 15 on my, my Equinox. And I've got another great find. It's been about five minutes since I found that heel plate. Check this out, guys. Right here. I don't know. That's a script something. Let me clean it up and get a close-up on my other camera. What I've got here is a script A button. I'm not going to be able to get a back mark off of it. It's pretty corroded. I might can get some of that off once I get back to the house. But just infield cleaning here. All right. I've got a clover heel plate and a script A button, and I'm not maybe 20 feet apart from one another. So far, I've been here 30 minutes, doing well. I don't know what Nugget Noggin's got, and got two other guys, Terry and James, is hunting with us, and I don't know if they found anything yet. But wow, I'll take that any day. I don't have a script A, but now I do. Cha ching Now this script A. I was talking to Nugget Noggin, and he was telling me that this is a rare button, that this is a Confederate States button. Confederate artillery, yeah. Confederate artillery. And uh, I looked up the value of it last night, and what I saw was anywhere from $300 to $350 button. Now, this may be an iron back because it has a lot of the iron on the back. It's not a brass back. But still, the front is in great condition. 
Well, that's a nice find there. Got me a 36 to a 40 signal, about six inches deep, and just dug it up. Look at this. Look down in that hole right there. What is that gonna be? That is an excellent shape too. I think that's a Morgan dollar. I think that's a Morgan dollar. Look at that. Look how deep this is. It's at least eight inches deep. No, it's a peace dollar. It's a peace dollar. It is a peace dollar. Gosh, let's pluck this out. Let me get my camera on it. That is a peace dollar, folks. Golly. Oh, man. Check that out. Check that out. Let me just set it right up here. And I uh, don't want to rub it too much. So it's time to break out the holy water. Nineteen twenty one twenty three, which is a common common date. What do you think about that, man? You worried about me getting a silver? And I got a silver all right. I thought it was a half dollar until I turned down, rubbed it, and I saw that uh, eagle on the back of it. Wow, that eagle sitting down. It's in great shape, too. I actually kissed it with my shovel. Let's see if I scratched it, though. I don't think I did because I was off just a little bit. Yeah, I, I did kiss it right there just a little bit. Just a little bit. That is my second piece dollar. I've dug two Morgan dollars. That's my fourth dollar I've ever dug. Oh, my day's made, man. I mean, I haven't been here. How long have I been here? Five minutes? Not even, I don't think. You just got here. I've dug one pull tab, and then I dug this. Wow. Check that out. A piece dollar. I was thinking it was a half dollar. My goodness. Let me uh, get it dried up, and I'll get some close-ups on it for you. Check that out, guys. That is awesome. Awesome. A 1923 piece dollar. Been here five minutes. And uh, all right. I hope I didn't jinx myself. A lot of times when you get your good target on the first time, you don't get anything else the rest of the day. But that's, that's worth the trip right there. I mean, how often do you dig a silver dollar? Man, that is good. Get in there close and look at that. That is good. Ah, I got to kiss her. She's beautiful. Mwah. Still working the old stubble field. I'm gonna hit this other side next. Got a 1920. Popped it up. Check that out. That is gonna be a very old ring. Wow, let me get it in the sun. A very old ring. Check that out. I don't know why my camera is not focusing there we go may have something on it right there it does let me clean this up and we'll come back to it check that out it's a big ring too it'll fit my finger I wear a 12 this is probably size 11 it's got two like uh, stalks on each side and two little dots on top I don't know what this is it looks old I'm hoping it's Roman or, or Celtic being bronze like that um, chances are it's going to be very old can't wait to get this identified all right that is a great relic I'm glad I stayed in this onion field this uh, stubble field is ringing up real choppy it was about uh, six inches deep that's amazing this is stuff I love to find right here says made in China right there no it's getting late day six is almost in the books I'm walking back to the gate here 
and I get this signal real low tone I wasn't really expecting too much like 11 a 12 dug it up but I don't know what this is this is a small coin and it looks old it could possibly be Roman so I yelled at Chris to come over here and uh, look at it and here it is I wasn't even expecting this can you see that it's right there let me get my other camera and I'll get a close-up on this you tell me what that is Roman silver denarius. Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh! Say that again, I get you on camera here. That's 2,000 year old Roman silver denarius. Roman silver denarius. Right there, folks. 2,000 years old Roman. Have you got a bit of water? I do have a little bit of water. Silver Roman. That's awesome, man. Congrats. Complete as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy water. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go too mad at it, but it's good. Man, it rang up real low as well. About 52? No. Yeah, oh, so mid tones? Yeah, yeah, like 11. I thought it was going to be, be a piece of junk. And I flipped it over and I saw that head. Yeah, that's awesome. That was a really a remarkable day just to be walking out of the field that evening and that was the last find and it was a real, wasn't a very good signal at all and, and I just dug it anyway and it ended up being that Roman coin. What a day that was. I'll never forget it. But later on that evening when we found out um, what Roman coin it was, it was identified as the Roman uh, Emperor Domitian. Immediately, you know, I hold a master's degree in biblical studies and uh uh, that just came to mind who that was and who he was and what he did to the early Christians in the early church. And I have a book here called Fox's Christian Martyrs uh, of the World. And you can read about these, uh, all the first uh, Christians and all the martyrs in the early churches and how the Roman emperors uh, had ten different waves of persecution against them. And the first persecution was with Nero. You probably heard of Nero. But the second persecution was the Roman Emperor Domitian. And uh, it began under his reign. He was the uh, brother of Titus, who also went down and destroyed uh, Jerusalem. And Domitian, the, the most famous thing that he did was that he exiled John to the island of Patmos. And we know that John wrote the book of Revelation. And so that coin is, um, is older than the book of Revelation, or, during, or at the same age as Revelation, because Domitian was the one that boiled John in oil. And he didn't die, and so later on, put him on the island of Patmos, and that's when God gave John the vision and the inspiration to write the book of Revelation. So, holding that coin and coming to that knowledge of that truth, it was a surreal moment for me as a, as a pastor. And uh, But uh, Domitian, he was an evil man. He was a very evil emperor. Uh, he remained there. I'll just read out the book here. He remained there into the reign of Trajan, governing the churches in Asia and writing his gospel until he died about the age of 100. And talking about John there. Uh, why did the Roman emperors in the Senate persecute the Christians so? First of all, they didn't understand that Christ's kingdom is not, is not a temporal kingdom, and they feared for their powerful leadership roles if too many Christian citizens followed Christ. Secondly, Christians despised the false Roman gods, uh, preferably to worship only the true living God. And whatever happened in Rome, famine, disease, earthquake, wars, bad weather, it was blamed on the Christians who defied the Roman gods. Death was not considered enough punishment for the Christians who were sub subjected to the cruelest treatment possible. They were whipped, disemboweled, torn apart, and stoned. Plates of hot iron were laid upon them, and they were uh, uh, strangled, eaten by wild animals, hung, and tossed onto the horns of bulls. And they were, after they were dead, their bodies were piled up in heaps and left to rot without burial. Nevertheless, the church continued to grow, deeply rooted in the doctrine of the apostles and watered with the blood of the saints. And this second wave of persecution was under this Roman emperor, Domitian. So when I held that coin and looked at that inscription, that bust, uh, this is what flooded my thoughts. And I remembered reading this in the Fox's Book of Martyrs many, many years ago. And uh, so that is uh, uh, the oldest coin I have ever found. And the only way I can outdo that is to go into B.C. and, and, uh, and find something during the time of, uh, of Christ. And, you know, before 81, during the time of Christ or even into B.C. 
But still, great find. I'm so happy. We, I'm coming back over here and just gridding off this section where we found those dimes. And I got a 18 solid, 18 solid, dug it up. And if, if this is what I think it is, this is going to be one of my best finds ever. Y'all see that? You see the edge of the S right there? It's tacoed over. Let me clean it up and get it out and without bending it. And let's see if we can get a better picture of it. Look at that, guys. I have never dug a U.S. plate. Is it a belt buckle? I don't think so. I think it's going to be attached here and here. I don't know if that came off uh, what that is. Please comment. Let me know. I'm not as thoroughly researched on my... But I've got a buckle, uh, Civil War belt buckle book at the house. I will look this up. But uh, I thought for a second it was going to say C.S., but U.S. So we definitely know there were some soldiers through here with that infield, those sharps, and those uh, ring, those uh, mini balls. Gosh, I'm, I'm just beside myself right now. I can't believe this. If you guys ever have any restoration and you are at the point that you want to restore, I do recommend that you don't restore if, if it's in good enough condition to leave it naturally. But if it's falling apart and you want to preserve it, he even left the crack in it that was from the, ori the, from the original. Check this back out. This is original hooks from the Civil War period. This is original lead from the Civil War period. That is just amazing. Check that out. Wow. Well, I got a special place for it in where I found everything else. Check that out right there. And uh, if you guys ever have a restoration need, just give JP Hunts a, a, a call or give him an email. His email is jphuntsrelics at gmail.com. jphuntsrelics at gmail.com. And uh, tell him I sent him over, sent you over there. He did a great job. So thanks again, JP. It looks wonderful. It's a great addition to my collection. I don't know what this is, folks, but it is beautiful. It's in great condition. There's the front side or the back side. I don't know. Here's the other side. Chris is on his way over here. We'll film him and let him tell us what this is going to be. All right, man. I have been out here 30 minutes and nailed this baby. That's awesome. My day's made. Here comes Chris. Let's uh, see what he says. And uh, Chris... Uh came back and uh, showed it to him and uh, this is what he did and I do have audio on this so I'll cut over to that and then we'll cut back to the rest of this. It must be good! Is it Roman? What is it? What is it? <laughs> what is it? Tell me! <laughs> what is it? I need to give you a hug. Give you a hug! <laughs> He's hugging me. That must be good. That must be good. A Saxon coin. A Saxon coin. Let me get in the sunlight here. I'm trembling. Yeah. A Saxon coin. What date range would you say that might be? Canute. That sort of thing. Athel thread canute. I don't know what that means. This is probably the best hammered coin that's ever been found. Hammered silver today, folks. Saxon. Ever. Hammered Saxon coin. Look at the back of it. Look at the or the front of it. Look at the king. Oh my days. You see how good a shape that is? All right. Preacher Digger done struck it again today. You like Britney Spears? Doing it again. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is awesome, oh man. This is awesome. Yeah. Oh my, I just can't stop saying oh my days. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so long as you don't say anything worse than that, then you go on the video. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I cannot believe. Do you know what I can't believe? I can't just believe. literally, just over there where that little gully is, I had Viking coinage. This is so close to Viking coinage. Wow. It's unbelievable. Viking. Just be very careful rubbing it and everything. I haven't. I just sprayed it with water. Yeah, that was it. But, um, Look at this, folks. It's time to get a picture, is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's time to get a picture. No. All right. Well, let's keep looking. Let's keep at it. Now, Chris is just still in unbelief. He could not believe what he saw. This is the best coin, hammered coin he's ever seen ever come out. 
of any of these fields. And he's uh, on his phone right now. He's researching this. He's making a phone call to the fines of the liaison officer. Uh, he is researching exactly what this is. And it ended up being the King Edward the Confessor, uh, which was the last Anglo-Saxon king and uh, dated from 1050 to 1050, uh, 1050 to 1053. And it was in the very prime time of England's history. And uh, it was just an unbelievable time, and uh, it was just an unbelievable dig. And as far as I thought that was all it was going to be, my day was made. But uh, lo and behold, uh, everybody kind of cleared out, and uh, Chris went back to make a phone call to the final liaison officer, and I began to dig again, and you're not going to believe it. Here I am. I'm sitting down. Now, I done dug my first one right there. Now, here's my second one, and there it is right in the plug. And I couldn't believe that uh, I had only found one, but now I have two of them I've already found. And uh, so I'm so excited uh, right now and called Chris back over. We break out the holy water and we spray this one down. And uh, it's going to be another King Edward the Confessor, the coin, number two. And uh, I just, I can't believe right here, I'm just talking about how I just can't believe that I, I found or a, a one, much less two of them. And you can see how close they were together. And here Chris has told us uh, to, to no longer dig. We can look for the signals but not dig them out And uh, because he's going to get the liaison officer see if he wanted to come out and stuff like that. And so uh, here I, I, I'm, I'm looking around. I'm still spotting some signals. And right there I've dug my one number one and number two. It rang up on, as a number 11 on my equinox. But here I got another signal. It was a 14. Thinking that it's a 14, it wasn't going to be another coin. But when I popped it out, lo and behold, it was my third Edward the Confessor hammered coin. And it rang up as a different uh, number, but uh, it was still nonetheless a Saxon coin. And I'm not even going to clean this coin. I just decided I was just going to just wait till everybody got out here. I was just going to leave it right there. And uh, there's possibly going to be some more out here. There's going to be another a, a, a hoard of coins out here, maybe a jar or whatever. So... We're just going to wait. I have another Mark one right there, and I'm just going to wait till Chris gets back and dig that one when he's with me. And so we're just going to let this down, wait for Chris to come out, and we're just going to keep looking around and see if we can find even more coins. I can't believe it. This is my third hammered Saxon not? coin. There There's the first one there. That's the second one there. Here's the third one, which I didn't think this was going to be as a different signal, so I dug it. I'm not supposed to be digging them right now, and I've got one marked right here, maybe one right there. We're thinking this is going to be a whore, but let's go ahead and let's bring this out. But again, it's time for the holy water. Let's bring it out and let's clean it up. Here and it is, uh, we'll folks. Get it the third up. one I've dug within now 45 minutes. I can't believe that. All right, I'm marking my signals now. That one's marked. It may be a fourth one right there. But look at this. Here it is. Let's get them all in the same direction. I can't believe that. Unbelievable, guys. This is this is number four. Number four. Check that out. It's in great condition, just like the other ones. This is 1050 to 1053. Saxon coins. This is a definitely going to be a hoard. It's, this is number. Look at there. So let's move on over. I've got uh, two more to look at. So let's go clean them up as well. Here is number five in the coin ball. You can see it right there. Pop this open. Oh, I lost it now. Where'd it go? There it is, right there. Oh, this is going to be even more silvery. Check that out. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. That is unreal. It looks the same, but it's actually different. It is. Look at that. Yeah, there's so many subcategories of these coins. This one looks a little different. Oh, I love that little man. He's gorgeous. Check that out, folks. Hopefully you can see it on camera. The way I can see it. Look that focus there. 
way I can see it. Let me get it focused. Look at that. I'm not going to clean it too much out here in the field. That is number five. Number five. Let's just sit him right down there. And we'll move over here to number six. Yeah, that's a little different. Dug one right here. Dug one there and one there. Moved down. We dug one there. Dug one here. Now, this is the furthest one away. Come all the way down here and check out. Here's my little buddy again. I already dug him out. All these are in just excellent shape. So if I pop that, I'm not rubbing it, folks. I'm just popping it ever so lightly and scraping that off. There it is. I know you can't see because of the sun. There we go. This is number six. Let's get him over here. Let's get the little man out. Where'd he go? Kind of hard to spray. There he is. Can you see that? Running out of running out of water. That's, that's a good thing when you run out of holy water out here digging so many coins. There he is. Wow, I'm gonna take them all out and we'll get a picture of all three of these today, and then I'll get a picture of all six of them together. And what a find, what a find. This is uh designated by England as a hoard. We're actually looking for maybe the urn of coins or stuff. And uh, it's definitely a national treasure, so we're doing everything by the law. Uh, the liaison officers involved and communicated with, the archaeologist is communicated with, and uh, we have permission to go ahead and look for these. And uh, so we're doing everything by the book. That way, uh, it's not some American over here stealing national treasure and smuggling it out. I really hope I get to keep these, uh, but I'm not sure. We'll find out. Uh, definitely get credit for it anyway. Now we're calling this. The Saxon Field is what we're calling this now. Well, at least that's what I'm calling it. Yeah, yeah.